Welcome back guys to yet another episode in our video series uh, on creating awareness for autism. Today's episode is all about acceptance. I hope you have been enjoying doing this with me, uh, doing this learning and unlearning with me. And I want to welcome you to this episode. And uh, in this episode, we have a guest from one of the top health facilities in the county. She's going to talk to us about creating awareness for autism and what acceptance looks like in today's society. If you like what we have been sharing so far, kindly keep following us on our social media platforms. You can also donate to our work and you can also buy our merchandise from our website and you can give us feedback on our social media platforms. We thank you so much for following us so far and we cannot wait to do this with you. So let's go. So guys, we finally have our guest uh, here with us today. I'm going to allow her to introduce herself as we continue with this conversation. Hi, I'm Melissa Shilicia, a psychologist at Oasis Doctors Plaza in Kisi County. Uh, so Melissa, I understand that you have a working relationship with Dazzling Center for Autism. Can you talk to us about that relationship? Our relationship goes uh, way back, about a year back. Uh, when I first had contact with the Dazzling team. Over time we have been seeing patients, uh, mostly children with autism, in our facility and uh, we came to understand that Dazzling and us share a mutual goal in assisting these children to have a full life. Why is psychosocial support important, especially for parents, the children living with autism and even the community at large? Just as any other special needs ch uh, child, uh, autism children need a lot of care and mostly around the clock, depending on where they are on the spectrum. It can be very indulging or involving for the caregivers, uh, psychologically and also physically. In most cases you find the parents to these children have to forego going to work and be full-time mothers or fathers to these children. So it's quite straining psychologically uh, and also to the community of uh, these autism children. Uh, let's say in a school setup, the teachers get to interact with these children and I, I think they, are, um, they have specific needs. And these needs sometimes it can be difficult to understand because when you don't know why they behave the way they do, you might find your way, your, yourself thinking somehow like um, these children is, are being defiant or they are being unruly or they don't follow rules and instructions. But in real sense, it is just their condition. And um, Melissa, as a facility, what kind of programs have you put in place to help, you know, give these parents support? As of March last year, we started an autism support group, we call it the autism community, where we indulge the parents in providing them with psychological care and also on need basis uh, when the children, when we have camps in the facility, the children can come in for free reviews by our specialists so uh, the parents will not feel like uh, they are quite strained financially on such days. Apart from that, we do community projects where we go to the community to create awareness. We sensitize uh, people about autism. It is a very, it, it is a very new thing uh, that people have not yet embraced. And sometimes someone might be living with a child who has the condition, but does not know how to go about it and feels helpless. Maybe they are keeping the child at home and uh, most of these parents you find them coming out and bringing the child to hospital for treatment. In the end this child improves and they are able to live a better life than they would have without the treatment. Melissa, we have um, educational intervention for the children living with autism. How does that work? Sadly, we don't have a very streamlined way of doing it, but uh, Dazzling, Dazzling uh, Center for Autism has come up with a very good way of dealing with the autistic children from the ground up. And uh, 
in my interaction with them I've come to understand that they have really done a great job at trying to integrate these children at the right time into the normal school system. And um, it comes with quite the expense on the parents because in most cases you find that the parent has to hire a, a shadow teacher. So the student goes to school with the shadow teacher who assists the student uh, side by side during the classes and everything and maybe back at home uh, in going through what they had at school. In, uh, in our education system uh, now outside Dazzling, I could say that a lot could be done to improve the education system for these children. And I think if a foundation is set, a strong foundation is set educationally for these kids, they will have a, 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 an easy way growing up and uh, developing careers and um, specialities that they would like to venture in as they continue growing. Uh, these ch children come with a lot of abilities a lot of uh, ideas, they are very intellectual, they have special things about them, each one individually. And you can find a child who is very good at art, there are children who are intellectually abled. Uh, if they are motivated towards the things that they like doing or where they, are, they have strong points, I think we can have these children being very productive in our society. And um, as you have mentioned, we have, you know, these uh, teachers that are giving them support. But um, what kind of support do these uh, educators need for them to be able to do their job well? Well, Yvonne, uh, these educators mostly need infrastructure. You find that uh, these teachers go to school, they are highly qualified, but when they go to the ground, they don't have the right amenities to take these children through education. And uh, when it comes to autistic children, they need specified uh, things so that they can be able to learn well. An ideal school should have the study area and a therapy room. And the therapy room is the one that comes with uh, a lot of expenditure. So, uh, for example, a therapy room should have things like stre stress balls, bouncing balls, uh, games, children games. The light should be very specified. The sound uh, in the room should be very specified. And uh, the type of air even in the room, it should be calm air, cool air. So the, these specifications can be quite expensive, especially when it comes to a government school. But uh, the private institutions have tried to upgrade these therapy rooms. And I believe if the right amenities could be provided for the teachers, they will be able to take these children through education very easily. Um, and with your interaction with Dazzling Center for Autism, do they have these facilities? I can say they have really tried. Uh, they have at least 80% of the right things in their facility. I was able to visit their facility earlier this year and uh, their therapy room is quite up, uh, upgraded. Although there are still some things that we are working together with them to ensure that they have for their institution to be much better. But I can say that 80% they have it. And Melissa, what kind of um, support can be advanced to the community at large? We start at awareness. Creating awareness to the community so that they can understand what is autism, what does autism look like, uh, what is expected of these autism children. Uh, starting at awareness, is where we can set the pace for creating a community that is acceptant, ac acceptant of these children, that is accommodative of these children, and that is able to improve these children. Uh, as a facility and as together with Dazzling Team, we have been doing a lot of community projects, going into the community, take, having walks around town to create awareness. And uh, I can say that so far the reception has been quite okay. But after 
creating awareness. What next? We go to acceptance. Because we might do the creating awareness, but the community is not ready to take in these children. It means that for that parent who is unable to bring out their child to the open and say that my child is autistic, they will continue hiding their child. For that individual who is autistic, they will feel that the community is not acceptant of them and they are not able to venture into the world and uh, do what any other person can do. So as, uh, as much as we continue with uh, the awareness that we are creating, we would like our people to be more open-minded about uh, mental health issues, and in this case for autism, and be acceptant of the autistic community, the autistic families, the autistic children. Melissa, what would um, the ideal awareness look like, especially in a social setting in the community at large? We are looking at a world where these children will be able to interact freely with everyone. Uh, I have, I have had conversations with some parents where they tell me that the autistic child is never allowed to go to the neighbors' houses. They are not allowed to interact with other children. So this, uh, uh, the other people might know about autism. They might know that this child has autism and that's why they are how they are. But they will not allow them into their world and hence they will not allow themselves into the autistic, uh, autistic world. Uh, sometimes being able to see things from an autistic child's point of view is magical. And I think in a community where we have embraced awareness, we'll be able to give these children a chance to allow us into their world, to lead us into their world. And uh, allowing uh, that will give them an upper hand in uh, interacting with other children will enable them to interact with other people and so we are trying to improve their quality of life in the long run. That was a lot. Uh, we have learned so much from you Melissa and I want to thank you for having us at your facility today and for everything that we have learned from you like so much information. We are so grateful for you and also you as the star of this episode I want you to share this information, share this episode with the facility, all the members from every department in the facility, so that we can have this word out. As you have earlier mentioned, awareness is what leads to acceptance. So we have to start by you know, sharing this information with people, our colleagues, our friends, our families, and we can reach as many people as possible. So as we you know, can get out of here, uh, can you talk to the camera, talk to your people, tell them something as we close this up. There you've heard it from the beautiful host Yvonne, the Oasis Healthcare Group team. Karibu sana uh, to this episode. Watch, share the video. And uh, to our Dazzling team, thank you so much for the continued partnership to Tendelea with the good work. Alafu, I can't wait to see you guys on 2nd April for our autism walk. We'll see you there. Have a good time. As we have seen, we cannot do this alone. We can only do this with you, with the community, by the community, and for the community. Remember, acceptance is the only solution. This week, remember to color your world with acceptance. Understand, accept, and love. Until the next one, I have been your host, Yvonne. Goodbye.